Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a wonderful time for, for me. I want to thank, first of all, for this invitation. It's the second time that I have the pleasure to be here in the principality. And I think uh, the work is, uh, is, uh, you are doing is wonderful, and especially my friend, Professor Loewe, uh, very good, an old friend. We, uh, uh, along this day, were discussing about ideas, uh, problems, uh, 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 philosophical problems. I want to tell you, at this moment, a story. It's a history of one country, the history of Peru. In Peru, the Marxist was not fallen, was defeated. Was defeated in the fields by police, by Peruvians, with a high cost. And I, I, I think it is rewardable and important for all of us to know a little bit about that story. We have a little uh, video now that I want to, to show you. I am convinced, completely convinced, y después de dar la vida por el partido de la revolución en la defensa los intereses de nuestro pueblo la clase darme vida por el partido de la revolución eso es lo que quiero decir para mí ser miembro del ejército guerrillero popular es un orgullo es llevar timbres de orgullo pues compañeros y como guerrillero como combatiente como soldado rojo del presidente Gonzalo también pues estar dispuesta a dar la vida por el partido de la revolución a defender pues el nuevo poder First, we see a column of guerrilla, of the Maoist Shining Path guerrilla, that used to fight in Peru between, between 1980 and 1992. At the end, you saw a little kid, eight years old, member of the guerrilla. Please, could you continue? Bye. Do you know where this video was, was shot? In prison, in the jail. They were marching, half an army, inside the jail in Peru. First, a little bit in, of in, the introduction. We are talking about Peru. Peru is, is, is a country in the Pacific Rim. You know? And mostly, all what I will talk about occurs in this department called Ayacucho, here. Ayacucho means, in, in Quechua language, the corner of the dead, el rincón de los muertos in Spanish, Ayacucho. And in some poetical terms, some rhetorical terms, it was during the Shining Path Revolution. First, what? What is Shining Path? Shining Path sounds, uh, I have a lot of friends in, in, in different countries and several times they ask me, what is Shining Path? It sounds like a yoga movement because it's not clear what is Shining Path. Shining Path was a terrible Maoist guerrilla. As I will explain, the Shining Path is the acronym, so a bigger name, uh, uh, you will see it, that uh, uh, identifies a Maoist movement that uh, were in the uh, style of the Cambodian Mer Rouge. They practice a kind of a Maoism school that belongs in the thesis of, of Pol Pot. I think with that little introduction, uh, everything could be clear now. 
The, the Communist Party of Peru, as I, as I told you, probably was one of the hardest Communist Party in the world with the most fanatic interpretation of the Maoist guerrilla. That means brings the violence from the countryside to the city. The military strategy of the signing path was to produce a guerrilla from the countryside to the city. Shining Path starting to act violently against the Peruvian society in May of 1980. And in fact, as we will see with some figures, is the responsible of the 54% of the people death in Peru during the internal conflict. The Shining Path uh, was a one of, of, the most, uh, of the most aggressive uh, uh, movement, guerrilla movement in Peru. But there is a difference between the Shining Path and the other guerrilla movements. In the case of the Sandinistas, in the case of the Argentinians, in the case of Tupamaros in Uruguay, they started to fight against military dictatorships right-wing military dictatorship. In the case of Peru, it was particular because Shining Path never act against a military dictatorship. Peru also had a military dictatorship during the 70s, but it was left-wing military dictatorship. And Sendero never, never act, the Shining Path never act against them. It was when democracy came back in 1980, with the election of President Fernando Belaunde Terry, a Democrat, when Sendero Luminoso, the Shining Path Party, start to attack society. So, as a reverse in all the guerrilla movement in Latin America, the Peruvian Shining Path with, was a movement against democracy, not against military dictatorships. Why Shining Path? Some people ask me a lot, some friends. I have a, a brother who is a historian and always uh, laugh with, with the name. In fact, the Shining Path is, is a phrase of a famous Peruvian communist called Jose Carlos Mariatin. He says that, is the, that Marxism, Leninism will open a Shining Path towards revolution. It was an expression. No, this is. Jose Carlos Mariategui, and he was a very important communist. He founded the Communist Party of Peru in the 30s. He, he died prematurely, and he, he, he's very important in, in, in South America. His influence, regretfully, was very intense. This is the founder of Shining Path. It's a man called Abimael Guzman which is his, his, uh, his main characteristic. He's a professor of philosophy, Kantian, expert on Kant. So probably is the most non-suspected person that could organize a terrible guerrilla. First of all, he's a professor of philosophy. You don't expect in a professor of philosophy to be a practical man and especially if it teaches Kant in a university. In this case, Abimael Guzman was not only a, a, a professor on, a, about Kant, on Kant, but also a terrible organizer and a very practical one. In fact, he organizes a vast uh, movement, almost an army, that uh, create a movement uh, for 12 years in Peru. Uh, it, is, it is funny, but just, just, uh, just an, uh, as anecdote, uh, anecdotic. Uh, uh, Guzman uh, has a very uh, uh, high uh, uh, idea of, of, of himself. So he, he says that he's, he is the fourth sort of communism. First, of course, is Marx. No, uh, uh, Lenin, Stalin, Mao, and him, no? He's the fourth. So he called himself 
President Gonzalo. And uh, about, uh, he, he, he tried to run uh, a, a communist society in Peru. Well, uh, all the members of the, of the Central Committee are mostly uh, uh, women. And the women around Guzman, especially these two, his, uh, her, his former wife, this one, and this one, the actual, who is, who is in, in jail with him, has a lot of influence in Guzman. And the members of the Central Party are predominantly uh, uh, female. So it's interesting, uh, uh, the discussion about the uh, equality of sexes in Peru, in this case, shining path, create a very important paramount. This is the explanation of, a, of, of how appears the shiny path. It, it's a little bit complicated, but it could be very interesting and funny if you follow me. What happens with the Peruvian uh, uh, communist movement is that Peruvian communists divided as the international communism divided itself. So, at the beginning, you know, when, the, when, when the Communist Party was founded in the 30s, was the Social Party first, and then the Peruvian Communist Party. When China fights with, excuse me, when China fight with the Russians during the 60s, the Communist Party, the Peruvian Communist Party, has divided between the pro-Chinese tendency, Partido Comunista del Perú, Patria, uh, Bandera, uh, uh, Bandera Roja, Communist Party of Peru, Red Flag, and Communist Party, Unidad, Pro-Soviet, Unidad, Unity, and Red Flag, Pro-Chinese. When China fights with Albania, the Ember Ox Albania, that reflects, that division in the communist, in the international communists, reflects in Peruvian communism. And the pro-Chinese party had divided in Patria Roja, Red Fatherland, and Red Flag itself, the Albanese, the pro-Albanese uh, tendency. Uh, when, and finally, when the pro the, the, the communist uh, the pro Albanese movement was divided between pro Albanese and Pol Pot the Cambodian Mer Rouge, the Peruvian red flag was also divided in Peruvian red red flag that steals and the, the obedience of Albania and the Cambodians Peruvian Partido Comunista del Perú por el Sendero Luminoso de Mariati, which means the shining path. We are talking about these ones. And these guys were who radicalized in the 80s and declared the war, the war again against Peruvian society. The organization of, of the Shining Path was terrible, complicated. As you can see, I, don't, don't, well, I, I will not describe everything there. But I want to remark one thing. That was the main problem for the police or for the security forces. Because it was so complicated that it was very difficult to fight against them. And the key of all of this was the cellular organization. At the end, there is only persons, the cells, and the principle of the organization of the Shining Path was that only, only the chief known the person under him. And the persons behind don't know the chiefs. So for the police, if the police capture somebody, the capture, the consequences of the capture were limited to that person because it is impossible, even torture him, killing him, to obtain nothing. Because the lower level of the, of, the, of the party never knows the higher levels of the party. 
Who discovers this? And it's very interesting for Professor uh, uh, Garton Nash, a member of Stasi. In fact, an Stasi trainee. I will, I will present after that the video of the capture of uh, Abimael Guzman. Was a Peruvian officer, a general of the police, Antonio Quetín Guzman, train, trained by the Stasi, who discovered how to solve this puzzle. Because the Peruvian armed force, trained by the Russians and, the, and some the Navy by the Americans, never solved the, the puzzle because they captured one, one guy and captured them, captured him. And that was a mistake. The police, that, that officer of the Peruvian intelligence, of the, Peru, of the, of the police Peruvian intelligence, following the Stasi suggestions and uh, uh, training, never captured nobody. He followed any person captured. And in two years, goes since the beginning to the end and capture Abimael Guzman without shot, shooting any gun. It was a, 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 a pure police capture. Well, Shining Path developed a, a, a strategy of propaganda in a Chinese style, uh, what uh, is very well known, and they start attacking, as, as, I, as I tell you, in uh, May, uh, in 1980, when the democracy came back, no, and started the popular war. Which, which were the consequences of this war? Terrible. At least uh, 40,000 people dead in 12 years. No, mostly by the Shining Path. 54% of the death by, were killed by the Shining Path according with a commission, this, this, this acronym of mil, means a uh, 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 true and reconciliation co commission are, are official figures. No? In, uh, in ages, you can see mostly the case of, of, uh, of uh, people in uh, adult uh, uh, age, and by sexes, mostly men, and adult ages, no less women. And the term, uh, in the terms of uh, regions, mostly in uh, Ayacucho, the place that I already showed you. The cost, the cost was terrible. Let me show you first this one. The cost was was terrible. Uh, in fact, 24,000 uh, billions. No, this is in, in millions. So this is 24 billions, 24 and a half billions of dollars. And if you take in account everything, first the direct cost, the opportunity cost for different fields is nine. nine Nine billion, and if you take also all the opportunity, more than 20 billion, as I already said. In one uh, a moment, almost a third of the country was affected by the violence, and it was especially uh, complicated. Uh, in 1984. The major part of the violence was in 1984. In one moment, they killed five persons per day. It was the worst moment in the, in the Peruvian civil war or, or the guerrilla movement. They used the classical Maoist stages, defensive strategic balance, offensive strategy. Let's go further because we have little time. The problem mostly was in 1984, I was, that's uh, such I was telling you, 18% of the total of, 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 of people. 
uh, about uh, Shining Path uh, uh, made 216 massacres in 12 years. 45 took place in 1984. And they killed almost uh, more than five persons daily uh, at that year. It was the worst year. In 1985, I started the government Alan Garcia, the first government of Alan Garcia. Besides the violence, Peru entered in a very complicated economic situation, 7,000% of inflation rate yearly. And if you can imagine that kind of situation in a country, violence, terrorist violence, signing path killing people, and also the government destroying uh, its own economy, the perspective of Peru appears to be very complicated. In fact, we have um, almost 1,000 car bombs in one, in one year. In 1989, it was another moment of the escalation of the, of the violence. And they tried to obtain the, the uh, equilibrium with the, with the Peruvian armed forms in 1992. And attack a TV station with a car bomb that was terrible. We have a, here a, 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 a video, yes, just five minutes. It was a, a car bomb, the first innocent attack, always the shining path attack, the military objective, the political one. He was in the middle of a neighborhood in Miraflores, which is an upper class neighborhood, uh, 10 blocks from my house. As, as you can see, was a, the, the first attack directly to the common people in, in, in Lima. No? And what happened? Well, at that moment, uh, it is terrible, terrible story. It's necessary to, to remember it. Sendero Luminoso, the Shining Path, killed almost a tribe in the Amazonic jungle. They disappeared, they are a Shaninkas, from uh, 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 6,000 6, deaths, they disappeared, 500, uh, and displaced 10,000. This tribe is uh, under uh, almost uh, destruction as a result of, of the Shining Path. Well, what happened? The Stasi guy, General Vidal, Ketim Vidal, uh, trapped Guzman using police uh, uh, strategies. Na nothing of violence, nor like in Argentina that uh, dropped people from the airplanes, or in Chile killing everybody, or in Uruguay. No, that's not the case in Peru. The police trapped all the Central Committee in an unbelievable operation. Abimael Guzman was hidden in a very particular place, in a ballet academy, in the second floor on, a, on an exclusive ballet academy in an upper class in Lima. Of course, the place in which you not think about one guerrilla leader uh, hidden, but that was exactly the, the truth. He was trapped, he's in jail today with all the central movement, or with all the central committee. So maybe some minutes there, some, some, some. This is uh, Guzman, his wife with a red flag in their hands. And the Stasi guy, of course, is. Uh, it's, it's not showing this, this one. It was exactly the moment of the capture. This is Guzman. This is the Stasi man. Let me, let me, well, this is General Guzman. Guzman is in jail, prosecutor under the Peruvian law, and he has uh, uh, two sentences of 30 years, and he, he is serving now the son. Uh, the, uh, the history of, of the Shining Pass is a, a terrible one. High excess that idea, ideas has consequence. 
That's true, but not only good ideas, also the bad ideas and the history of Peru as that the bad ideas also has consequences. Shining Path was, looks like a craziness, trying to introduce a Cambodian style regime in the middle of the Andes with no tradition of that kind of, of systems sounds like a craziness. But they, they tried to do it and, and kill a lot of people, 40,000 people, and uh, introduced for, for 12 years and, uh, and never seen uh, bef violence be before. What uh, that experience uh, learned to Peruvians that it is, uh, I, I think, is also very important. It is possible to fight against fanatism and it is possible to defeat them democratically. Fujimori betrayed uh, his election in 1990 and began to be an iron ruler in 1992. He was in jail after that for that. But all the economic changes and the defeat of, uh, of, of the Shining Path was by democratic means. In this case, it was not the army, was the police, using police, police techniques, uh, very normal and common techniques. Uh, it is important to see also the consequence. Peru now is the rising star of the Latin America economics. I am finished. Peru has a, a very important growth. After the defeat of, uh, of Sendero Luminoso, the shining path, uh, Peruvian star, Peru starts a very important economic reforms, privatizing, reorganizing, uh, and, uh, and, and creating uh, 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 different uh, fields for, for the enterprise and for uh, international invest, investment, particularly in mining, in mining. So today, Peru, after this craziness and, the, and uh, after this nightmare, Peru has a very, very important uh, uh, experience of how to pass from the hell to, I don't know, it's a heaven, it's probably an exaggeration, but to a land in which it's possible to live and work. And the shining path is nothing else than shadows and dust. Thank you very much.